I kind of thought that software would be really smart by the time I got out of college. You know, we would use a piece of software and it would get better every time we used it. And certainly in 2000, that wasn't the case. Most of the software we're using would make the same mistakes over and over again. Uh, and I realized there was some gap and uh, kind of the thought hit me that, you know, that wasn't going to always be true. Someday all software would learn. And then once all software started learning, people wouldn't tolerate anything else. And I decided that I wanted to build that company. Uh, and digital reasoning was fundamentally about creating software that learned, uh, starting after, in the area of human communication. Uh, how would you take what people said, have computers deal with the ambiguity and learning from in context uh, usage of words and language so that a system would not be limited by just what we programmed, that it could really learn from interacting with us. Um, and that was the vision, and today, you know, a decade later, we're pretty far along in that vision. Um, we can probably read documents about as fast as anyone in the world, and we can connect together hundreds of millions or billions of, of entities and documents um, into a knowledge representation that machines can do something with. Uh, and that's like a critical first and very, very large step uh, to the larger vision, which was how do you make software that understands me and gets smarter the more that I use it. It was the purest of startups. You have an idea, you start building it. And the problem was very hard. So figuring out how to learn what words mean based on how they're used in context and making that scale over a lot of documents took years. And uh, that work, um, I think a big milestone was, was showing that sufficiently mature you know, early on 2002, 2003 to the Army, uh, having them get interested enough to say, yeah, we think this could really help our analyst out. Uh, getting a large awarded contract from them uh, in 2004 and, and working through the next several years on that, trying to see it get to the front. Uh, and then I think finally when the partners of Silver Lake saw, you know, said we, can, we think we see this going into other industries like financial services, that was another huge milestone. So we're, we seem to be increasing the, vec the velocity of these big milestones. While we were going after making sense of data through software a decade ago, until you had this massive big data uh, hype wave and turn where people say, wow, we really can't manually process this information and make sense of it anymore. It's going to require automation, require software. Um, then I think the market had turned. And so the, I think the market has turned now and people know they need to answer this problem, but there is going to be a lot more work um, trying to take their belief that they need an answer to being the, the company they trust to give them that answer. And I think that we've become a company people trust in the government space to give them those kind of answers. And now I think that trust has started to transfer in other markets. And that's probably the biggest milestone recently has been uh, seeing how banks have responded as we come in and said, well, we can make sense of this data for you. The level of noise, um, you know, kind of data that's problematic and erroneous uh, is lower in the enterprise than it is in the intelligence community. So decisions have to be made on essentially much poorer information, raw information, a lot more of it in the intelligence community. So there's a lot more noise to deal with. And therefore technology, I think, coming out of there has to be more robust if it's going to be effective. Inside an enterprise, some of the same fundamental top level questions apply. Who talked to who, where, and about what? Who knows who? Who is the best person to get in touch with someone? These are questions you would ask in both places. While the data may be different, the algorithms that take that data once it's turned into something looking similar could be very much the same. We find what's in this is they are pretty much the same. Uh, and it's the realization that both markets now have, they have too much data, too much data that's human and unstructured to be able to um, be able to manually triage it or just break it into pieces and count it. So we're about fundamentally breaking it into the right pieces, connecting together the right way, and then being able to answer questions on it. And that's similar between both sides. Uh, and even the questions look sometimes surprisingly similar. We're moving beyond the cloud. We're moving beyond aggregation being a necessary step to make sense of data. It's not a long-term sustainable architecture. The only sustainable architecture will be distributed. We're moving into a culture where people aren't gonna be supplying computers and in the notion of big computers, like desktops and laptops, what you have. And there's gonna be a world they call it bring your own device, BYOD. And people are going to be uh, coming in with their iPhones and their iPads and their Android phones and they're going to access software that lives partially in the cloud and partially behind the firewall in the private cloud of a company or in an agency. 
having learning work effectively across those things is a very, very hard challenge uh, because it means you have to think of not what just the fastest algorithm is if all the data is local, but what's the fastest way to converge to the right answer when you're getting data brought to you over a network over time. That's tricky and that's a big point, a place of innovation for the next several years.